I believe. Yeah, 331, 332. 332. Hey, man. A wonderful blessing. So, time runs quickly, and, uh, and the Word of God is upon us. And today, we want to, from the lectionary, the common revised lection, the revised common lectionary, we have two um, readings which I will try to cover out of Exodus 21 through 4, 7 through 9, 12 through 20, and Psalm 19, all of which have been read for your hearing and for your edification and for your upbuilding. Amen. So today we want to learn more about the Ten Commandments. Uh, we want to learn more than just the law and, uh, and just Ten Commandments. Uh, so let's see where the Spirit leads us. Amen? Amen? Amen. So let us pray. Father God, we want your word to be plain. We want the hearers of your word to be understanding of your word and that they may be doers of your word so lord through your holy spirit speak now that we may have greater understanding about you so that be that we can be with you so that we can be a reflection of you and we can be you in jesus name we pray amen Amen. So our focus today will be on, on the context of the law. Yes. And what I mean by the context, um, it is the setting in which the commandments were given and the function of the law in our Christian faith. Amen? Yes. Uh, so what is God up to? in giving Moses and us ten commandments. And all those laws under the Old Testament, what is it about humankind that God thinks that we need these laws? I mean, that's what I mean by the context. Amen? We know that there are ten commandments. But did you know that people of different faith uh, number them differently. Uh, and I would have shown you a chart had I printed the document. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, the Jews have a different way of numbering the Ten Commandments. 
um, the uh, Orthodox uh, um, Reform have a different a different way, and then the Saint Augustines have a different way. Uh, so, for example, I'll give you an example. The Jewish start off with, and God spoke all these words, saying, and the first ones, I am, the first commandment is, I am the Lord your God. The second one is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. In ours, we normally say, the first one, you shall have no other god before us. So those are some of the kind of different ways. I just want you to know that there is a difference in how different people see it. And if you have a, a cursive reading of, of the, of, of the uh, Exodus where it gives you the commandments, there seems to be almost, I think it's 14 or 16 commands, actually. But we group them together so we can come up with the Ten Commandments. Amen? But as Christians, uh, we need to keep Jesus in mind as part of the context of these Ten Commandments. In the Gospel, Jesus declares that two commandments are to be the greatest. Amen? You shall love your God, your Lord, your God, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second, like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I used to think that when Jesus, what Jesus meant was, uh, I don't have to follow the original Ten Commandments. I just have to follow the first two, those two that he mentioned. However, I've learned that when Jesus says, love your Lord, Love the Lord your God, uh, he is summarizing the first five commandments. And he's summarizing the last five commandments when he says, Love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> so I don't need 10 weeks uh, to, to, uh, to do a sermon series to preach and teach about the Ten Commandments because we really can just sum it up by saying, Love God and love your neighbor. Amen? So what I want you to take away from today's sermon is the purpose of the commandments is love. Amen? Love God, love your neighbor. We, don't, we do not keep the commandments for our own personal benefit. We keep them as a way of love, to love God, and as a way to love our neighbor. Amen? So <clears throat> that's the content of this sermon. The sermon title is The Ten Commandments of Love. Amen? And the subtitle I have is Law Without Relationship or Reason is No Law at All. The Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20 uh, is in Exodus chapter 20. But it's in chapter 19 that we learn why. The reason God had given us these commandments to us in the first place. Amen? The why is important. In other words, the reason is important. In chapter 19, God establishes a relationship with us. God pulls us close and protects us. And God says, I bore you on eagle's wings, and I brought you to myself. Amen? 19 says that we are God's own chosen people, God's treasured procession. God establishes a loving relationship with us before he gives the law. Relationship in 19 comes before and is the context of or for the law in chapter 20. Amen? Our relationship with God is the why. It is the reason of the law. We have the law because we are God's treasured possession. The law reflects our value to God. The law tells us how to live in relationship with God and how to live in relationship with our neighbors. Amen? Amen? Relationship and reason precedes law. It is a natural order. Relationship comes before the law of marriage. Our relationship as a church comes before our constitution and bylaws. Amen? Amen. There would be no need for a constitution or bylaw if we did not first have a relationship. We would not need the Ten Commandments if we did not first have a relationship with God and all of God's children. Amen? Amen. 
God describes our relationship again at the beginning of the commandments. He says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Our relationship with God sets us free. Freedom is a gift from God. God brings us out of slavery to love and worship God. For freedom to love and worship and, and care for our neighbor. Amen. In other words, we, we, we are free to love and worship God. And because of that, we are then free. We have the freedom to love and take care of our neighbors. Amen. These commandments are not meant to limit our freedom by telling us what we can do or cannot do, although that's precisely what they do. Amen? These commandments say this is how free people live. Amen? People who are free do not murder one another, like many murders that are happening around our country by evil folks. Amen? God does not set us free to steal or commit adultery or covet the property of our neighbors. Amen? Free people worship God, and free people keep the Sabbath. Amen? We are not slaves to our work. We rest. We have rest. We are truly free when we obey the law of God. When we obey the law, life can be like soaring on eagle's wings. I think that some preachers may feel that they need ten weeks to teach on the Ten Commandments, because they are confused about the purpose of the commandments. Early in my life, I saw, uh, I, was, uh, I was taught that obeying the Ten Commandments, uh, by that way, I could be secured a place in heaven. Amen? Uh, if I broke the commandments, I would surely spend my eternity in a fire furnace. Uh, did anyone get that lesson before? Yeah. With <laughs> Amen? Where, you know, if you didn't, get your, do your Ten Commandments, if you didn't uh, obey those, you're going to hell. Amen? But instead, uh, I was being told, Ramon, in your declaration of faith or in your declaration of salvation and our profession of your faith in Jesus Christ, uh, you are set free, so don't commit sin. Don't kill or steal uh, or, it, or be involved in sexual immora- immoralities. I was told, Ramon, live your life as a slave to the Ten Commandments or you will go to hell. But God does not give us Ten Commandments as a means to salvation. The Ten Commandments are listed in both Exodus and Deuteronomy, and neither book has a word about salvation or heaven or hell. Amen? The truth is that commandment is nowhere to be found thereabouts. The actual word is word. The actual word is word. (laughs) Amen. Amen. The passages that refer to the Ten Commandments do indeed specify that there's ten. But they don't actually say that it's a commandment. What they actually say is that they are ten words. Amen. I know you don't believe me. So let's look to the word. Amen. Exodus 34, 28 says, And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread, nor drank water, and he wrote upon the tablets the words of the covenant, the ten words. The Hebrew word is Esa Debar. Amen? Deuteronomy 4.13 says, And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, that in the ten words, the Hebrew Esa Debar, and he wrote them upon the tablets of stone. Deuteronomy 10.4. And he wrote on the tablets of his first writing the ten words, Hebrew, Esther, Debar, which the Lord has spoken unto you on the mountain, out of the midst of the fire, on the day of the assembly, and the Lord gave them to me. Amen? So what the Hebrew actually is saying here is that there are ten words, amen, Debar, rather than ten commandments, as we often or properly say or refer to as the Decalogue. Um, And what that means, Decalogue just means ten. And log or dialogue means words. Amen. Um, So if you want to know about salvation, amen, the books that you need to read are the Gospels, the good news. Remember Jesus? Our salvation is through 
the freely given grace of God by the faith of Jesus, our Christ. See, it's not even our faith. It's his faith. Amen? Our salvation is was settled by Jesus on Golgotha, not by Moses on Mount Sinai. Amen? The Ten Commandments aren't about our salvation. In fact, the, the Ten Commandments aren't about that at all. They're about God, and they're about our neighbors. God doesn't give the law so that we can just strive to have a perfect behavior or so that we can have, uh, be more morally spiritual, more spiritual, um, so that we can have the best life now. No. The commandments are so that the neighbors can have the best life now. The law is about loving our neighbors, <laughs> not for our own benefit, but for the benefit of our neighbors. The law is given so that our neighbors can strive. Neighbors, neighbors, neighbors. Amen? Amen. Do not bear false witness against the neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's house. Do not covet your neighbor's spouse. When it is the day of rest, make sure that all your neighbors get their rest. Oh, yes, even the elderly neighbors, honor them. Take care of them. Amen? Paul understands that the commandments are about loving your neighbors. He surmises it in Galatians where he writes, The entire law is summed up in one single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen? Paul isn't saying that you have uh, to be warm and cozy, cozy, cozy feeling about your neighbors. Not at all. Paul is saying love them, don't kill them. Love them, don't steal from them. Love them, do not commit adultery against them. Love them, take care of them. Amen? Your neighbors are hungry and thirsty. Don't keep all your food and water to yourself. Don't have a comfortable life uh, at the expense of your neighbor. Make sure that your neighbors are having a good life and not lacking. Amen? And that's good news for your neighbors. God loves our neighbors so much that God tells us to ensure that they have a good life. This is the good news for us, too. Because God loves us so much that God tells our neighbors not to kill us, not to steal from us, and not to pollute our waters, our air that we share. Isn't that good news? Now, that's good news. And you don't need 10 weeks, amen, for that, amen? But I tell you what it is. The good news is more than 10 weeks. It's a lifetime of sermons. The author of Psalms 19 provides us a wonderful sermon on the good news of the law of love. Amen? Psalm 19, as it was read, is describing God and the beauty of his creation. Amen? The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the ferment proclaims his handiwork. The psalmist reminds us that, that God created by God's word, and that God is still speaking throughout the universe. Day to day pours forth speech, and the night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor, there, there, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. That is, his voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. Some of God's words are those that have been given in the law. From the psalmist's point of view, the law is God's creative word. And it is beautiful and it's essential to life as the moon is or the sun or the stars. The beauty and freedom of God's news of the law is clear in the second part of the psalm that was printed. Amen? I'll start with seven. It says, the law of the, of the Lord is perfect, covering the soul, and the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the law are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord is tr are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, then much more fine gold. Sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. As you enjoy the beauty of the creation, remember to enjoy the law as an integral part of creation. When the taste of honey, remember the law to be just that sweet. That the law, the Ten Commandments are beautiful 
sweet gifts of us from God because God loves us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight of the Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Amen. 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 I know you wanted more, huh? <laughs> Amen. Thank you. 